teach it in PK Independence. Today, we're going to be doing a mindful craft in which we get to design and make our very own mala bracelets. Now, if you're not familiar with what a mala is, don't worry. It's very simple and it's been used as a tool to help us meditate for thousands of years. Now we use this tool to help keep track of how many times we're repeating a mantra or a short little sweet saying to remind ourselves how awesome we are, how wonderful our day is going to be, whatever it is that we need to hear that day. Now sometimes when we think of meditation, we think of a monk sitting peacefully in a garden with nothing to do the whole rest of his day, meditate in silence. And while that can be the case, we can absolutely devote our lives to meditation. A lot of times our life is just so busy that we can always take just a few moments out of our day, our week, our month, whatever it is, for a little bit of meditation and mindfulness. Before we get started, here are some examples of mala beads that I've made, as well as some that my own kiddos have made. As you can see, the options are endless in terms of what you can design and create. If you don't have a good stock of beads to work with at home already, you can choose some online. And here are a couple of websites that I like, as well as a local bead store here in Scottsdale that I love called Bead World. Keep in mind, you won't need more than 20 beads or so total depending on how big your wrist is. If you find you love making these, you can always invest in a few more to keep creating. Here are some of the items that you'll need for your first mala project. Number one, your choice of beads. Today, I'm using these eight millimeter Magnesite pink and gray beads. I tend to enjoy keeping my mala simple, but if you find a bead or two that you'd like to sprinkle in to make it more interesting to you, go for it. Different stones are said to hold different energetic qualities, so if one is calling to you, go with it. Number two, bead cord. There are lots of different kinds, but I like this nylon bead cord that I found at Bead World in Scottsdale. You're also going to need scissors, clear glue, a lighter, and an adult to go with it. Let's get started. First, you'll need to measure out about 12 inches of bead cord. Even though this will be way longer than a bracelet, you'll need a little extra on both ends to finish it off later. Begin by making a double knot about four to five inches from one end and make sure your bead will stop when it gets to the knot. If it doesn't, keep knotting over the same knot to make it big enough to hold the bead. Next, start adding your beads. If you're doing a pattern, plan out the pattern either on paper or with your beads in a tray or a safe place where they won't roll away from you before you start stringing. There are a few different ways to do this. Option one, like I'm doing in this video, you can simply put the beads on the string one after the other and that's it. Or option two, shown here, can be really tricky. It's also a little more time consuming and requires more focus as you make double knots on top of each other between each and every bead. This is the more traditional way of making malas. And also it's a very practical way too because it makes the beads not only stay in place, but if the string were to break, you wouldn't lose all your beads. Knotting between each one is a great way to give yourself a little mindful challenge too. Getting the knot as close to the bead as possible forces you to focus solely on doing so. If you're distracted, it will show in your work, as with any other work that you do. So if and when you become frustrated with the process, take a deep breath. Shake off any negativity you've built up toward the project or yourself and start looking at it with fresh eyes. Maybe your hands get tired, you need a break. Just take one. This has no time limit. Take a wiggle break, stretch break, water break, whatever break, and come back when you're ready. Once you have enough beads to go almost all the way around your wrist, tie another double knot after the last one and grab your tape.
make a circle overlapping the loose ends and tape down on either side so there's a little space in the middle. Then measure out another 12 inches of bead cord and fold it in half. Put the loop of that 12 inches under the two strands from your bracelet between the tape. Pull the loose ends through the loop to secure. So you now have two long strings. I'm gonna make a figure four with those two strings. The straight string that goes straight down is going to go underneath everything and through the middle of the four. You're gonna slowly tighten by pulling the ends. This is the same way we make another type of bracelet. Sometimes we call it a friendship bracelet. So if maybe mom or dad remembers how to do this from when they were in middle school or high school, they might be able to help you out with this in case you get confused. Once the friendship bracelet section is about three quarters of an inch long, tie small knots on the ends, cut short, and ask an adult to burn the ends of the string with a lighter or match, very carefully. Next, add one small bead at the end of each string. Make a knot before and after the bead to keep it in place. Again, cut the excess off and ask an adult to burn the ends. This ensures that the string won't unravel your knot.
All done. Try on your bracelet and admire your hard work. When you have some quiet time to yourself, write down a short and sweet saying. This is going to be your mantra. Make it easy to remember and have it be something that you need to hear today, anything at all. Holding the bracelet in your lap, sit comfortably and close your eyes. With your thumb and one finger holding just one bead at a time, breathe in and say the first half of your mantra. Something like, I am. On your breath out, say the second half. Calm. Repeat the same way for each bead, gently moving to the next bead after each exhale. When you get to the end, congratulate yourself. You were just meditating. How do you feel? Wear your bracelet as much as you can to remind yourself daily of this feeling. And take a little time each day to be mindful and breathe. Don't forget to share your completed project with us by email or on the Peak Academics Facebook page. Also, feel free to subscribe for more yoga and mindful crafts, as well as tips and tricks for self-regulation and executive function from all of us at the Peak Academics team. Namaste.